Hey everybody, Ashley Page here. Thank you so much for joining us on our educational vlog today. If you're new to the educational vlog, what we try to do with it is to give you a little bit more depth of topics and terms that we use on the portfolio side that are outside of our normal portfolio vlog and discussion. So we're delighted that you're with us today. And our subject today is, what are supply shocks in the US economy? And why do they particularly matter right now to your markets and money? So the supply shock term is one that we use a lot on the portfolio side that you may not hear as much on our portfolio vlog. So we want to give you a little bit more of a definition and the fact that this last year has been really unusual in the number of supply shocks we've had on the US economy. So let's first of all talk about what a supply shock is. The first thing is, let me have you imagine just a factory. Let's say that it produces automobiles. Anything that comes into the front side of the plant, whether it is a tangible resource, like a fine metal, whether it's lumber, whether it's anything like that, it can be an intangible resource like workplace, anything like that coming into the front end of the factory is what we call the supply chain or supplying into the front. That goes into the factory, that produces the auto. So what we're talking about today is some uh, disruptions that have occurred over the last really 12 months, pretty much May of last year to May this year, that are very unusual both in the number and mix. So a supply shock occurs when all of a sudden you're operating correctly, trying to produce the cars on the back end, but all of a sudden something that you need critically, whether it's your people, whether it's components, whether it's anything like that, that is normally coming in the front end to help the production on the back end gets disrupted in pricing for whatever reason. So that's what a supply shock is. Supply shocks can be both good and bad. A great example of a negative supply shock that you may remember is the oil and gas crisis back in the 1973, 1974 era. That created a supply issue for the entire country that was inflationary for a lot of that decade. So that's sort of a negative supply shock. Staying on the energy theme for a minute, a positive supply shock would be something like the development of fracking. All of a sudden, the technology changes and you can produce energy much more simply. And you go from the United States being uh, an importer of energy to an ex exporter. So those are good examples historically of supply shocks. The reason we're highlighting this phrase of supply shock, particularly right now, is that over the last 12 months, we've had a lot of very unusual things that have impacted the economy as a whole in the United States. And there are six. Number one, and the most obvious, is the pandemic. I mean, from April of last year until now, coming out of the backside of it, the pandemic has created more supply problems around the world for more different companies than you can imagine. It has been on the order of a supply shock disruption like a World War II was, but it's even been more global than that. So number one and the most obvious that we've talked about is the pandemic. That's created a lot of supply problem for U.S. industry. Number two, one that you may not have caught and is a little bit kind of back of the headlines, is that there was a major fire at a Japanese uh, semiconductor plant earlier this year. Well, if you think about semiconductors, if you've got anything in your home or so many projects uh, or products, I should say, that use logic components, a semiconductor goes into it. So there are a lot of more high value advanced manufacturers in the United States than in addition to the pandemic, they've been dealing with a supply shock of not enough semiconductor production. So you've got one pandemic, two, the supply shock on semiconductor. Number three, go back a little bit um, about five, six, seven months ago. We've probably all forgotten this by now, but remember the weather issue in Texas. Uh, Texas, with that winter storm, was shut down by the time the storm came through and they recovered from the power grid on it. Uh, the state of Texas was offline in terms of our economy for nearly a month. Well, 
you think, well, that's one state, but let me give you some perspective on that. Texas is the second largest economy in the United States, number one. And if you ranked it in economies of the world, it's number 10. And to give you a compare and contrast, Texas as an economy is larger than Canada is and larger than South Korea is. So we went for about a month with major supply chain disruptions or supply shock coming out of the state of Texas. That's number three. Number four, you saw this. You saw a lot in the popular on lumber prices. I have a close friend who's a developer in Nashville, has been for years. He told me about two months ago that he had to rework the financials of every, every project he was working on up there because of the price of lumber. Now, now that's starting to mitigate a little bit, but you remember price of the lumber for a lot of the industries was extraordinarily high there for a while. So that's the supply shock. Number five, we talked about it doesn't have to be a physical product like lumber is. One thing that is a supply shock right now is on the backside of the pandemic, not all of our workforce has returned back to work. And you say, well, why is that important? It puts upward wage, wage pressure on companies to pay better to keep the people they have. So number five is a supply shock is wage. Number six, and the most recent one, is the drought in the West. Uh, the drought in our Western states right now is really unprecedented in two or 300 years. And where that disrupts uh, supplies or creates a supply shock in the U.S. economy is number one, agricultural. You know, you're not producing as much agriculturally because of the drought, that's obvious. But a little known fact right now is the Southwestern United States really for the past five years has been the tops in growth in manufacturing. And that's because the land is cheaper out there. They've been, they've had a really high success rate, particularly the last couple of years, states like New Mexico, Arizona, locating manufacturing plants. Well, you know, if you have a water issue with a drought, you know, how are you going to operate a plant without any water? I think very difficult to do. So the point that we want to make to you is, is that other than the pandemic, which was a massive supply shock into the economy, We've had of these other five go along with it, and six supply shocks in an economy in a 12-month period is kind of unprecedented. You just don't see that. Well, what practically does all of that mean to your money? It means that you will introduce from time to time a little bit more volatility on prices because they're not at equilibrium. It causes a little bit of transitory inflationary pressure. And guess that what? That's exactly what we've been seeing. Uh, Greg did, and I recommend this to you highly, a great interview with Fred Katayama of Reuters last week. If you hadn't seen that yet, it's really great on handling inflation and the fact that it's more transitory. But the reason we're running into some of this transitory um, inflation right now that the Fed is trying to deal with a little bit is that we've had all these supply shocks together and the U.S. economy is trying to react to that. The reason that can be a little bit problematic is it's hard for the Federal Reserve to deal with a supply shock. Let's take the one of the winter weather in Texas. Whether you raise interest rates or lower interest rates, you've still got to work through that issue. So the Federal Reserve can't deal with that as much as it can with other things it introduces a little bit more volatility in markets like we saw last week. But that's why the underlying, that's why you're seeing a little bit more of that volatility in the market right now, because we've gone through an unprecedented level of a combination of these six supply shocks I've just given you. So we hope that's interesting to you and gives a little bit more background of what things are going on with markets. As always, we love for you to reach out to us by any form of social media. We love the dialogue on questions. Feel free to call us at the office if you want any uh, more information on this topic and others. And until we see you again, hope you have a great week. Thanks.